podcast and welcome or welcome back to my channel hi how are you guys my cat is scratching on the scratching post hold if you've been around for a while you know i love to go thrifting i love a good thrift find but this time of year i find myself spending more and more time in secondhand shops and consignment shops in search of gifts special items to wear to parties or anything that i can get my hands on that would make a great addition to our home for the holiday season while i've been out i have just been finding so many pillar candles and I always buy these secondhand. You can get them for such a great price. This Wednesday's video, we will be doing part three of my little series we're doing here on this channel of repurposing some of the cheapest things I find in my local thrift shops. And we are doing the holiday edition. I was super inspired by this Pinterest post where they had like the candles with the like advent numbers on them. I thought that was so cute, but I wanted to do something a little bit more special. So we are going to be doing painted candles. I've done a little bit of practicing just to get the hang of it and kind of come up with some designs that I think would make a really beautiful, fun, classy adult advent calendar for this holiday season and repurpose and find a way to use these pillar candles in a new and interesting way. So grab yourself a cup of tea, set up your space, get cozy, and let's get creative. I could drink buckets of this. This DIY project is very simple and requires very little materials, and you most likely have everything already in your craft cupboard. Starting with the tapered candles, I was able to thrift mine, but you can get them at your local dollar store or any general supply store that sells candles. Next, you need water-based non-toxic acrylic paints. The likelihood that they're gonna come in contact with the flame is very low because you're painting on the outside of the candle, but you still wanna be careful what kind of paint you use here and double check the ingredients and the packaging to make sure it's non-toxic and water-based. Next, you'll need fine tip brushes. You could totally get away with using just one brush for all all of these designs. I used the same brush for all four designs. You just wanna make sure it is a thinner pointed tip because you are working on a small curved surface. And the last thing you'll need is some water in a dish and paper towel, just like you would for any other painting project. The first design we're working on are these monochromatic blue branches. Start by turning the candle upside down. This will help you get the right line weight on all of your strokes. They look nicer with a thicker base and a finer tip, and the candle being upside down makes that easier to accomplish. Go ahead and add your first branch. You do wanna make this line a little wiggly, that way when you add the branches, it looks more organic. And once you have that main branch established, you can start adding in your smaller offshoot branches. There's no real rule here, but I do like to make it look as natural as possible by adding the lines in the curves and making sure everything connects and flows. Once you're happy with the branches, you are ready to add your leaves. My rule of thumb is to work in groups of threes and cluster your leaves where the plant natural nodes would be. That way it looks the most natural and ends up looking balanced. From this point on, you are just rinse and repeating the exact same steps, starting with your main branch, your smaller branches, and then adding your leaves. Keep in mind that this design looks best when it's in a larger scale and when your branches are spread out. You don't want them overlapping or touching. You can repeat the same size and design for each of the branches or vary them slightly here like I did. Either way, it's gonna end up looking amazing. For the second design, you need gold paint. I didn't have any on hand, so I'm gonna have to mix up my own. I'm doing this by taking yellow as my main color adding a little bit of brown to darken it up, and then adding an equal amount of gold glitter paint to add sparkle and shine. If you have to mix your own paint like I did, make sure you do that really well so there isn't any variation in color. Then you can get started on the design. I'm making three different star variations. The first being an eight point star, and I'm making this, I'm doing this by making a lowercase T shape and then adding an X right through the center. This looks best when the vertical center line is the longest and all the other lines are shorter. 
The second type of star is a four-pointed star. To make this one, start with a lowercase t again, but instead of adding more lines, you are going to connect with a concave line and then fill in the center space. And for the third style of stars, you're just gonna make simple dots to fill in the rest of the space. I did mine in clusters of three and then two and then singles, just to add some more variation and difference in all the sections. The third design we're working on is very similar to the first, but does have some key differences. For this version, hold the candle right way up and with your dark green paint, you're going to start making branches just like the first design, but do your best to make these ones a little bit more delicate and dense. Same with the leaves. You want these branches to be a little bushier than the first and smaller. Once you're happy the amount of leaves and the size of your branches, Add in these little red dots to act as berries and you'll end up with this beautiful green branch with red berries. I like to cluster mine in groups of three or singles just to add dimension and variation throughout the clusters. The fourth and final design may look the most complex, but in reality, it is the easiest one to execute. Begin with dark green paint, and while slowly rotating your candle, add dashes working from tip to base. These marks will be your landmarks to make sure you're working your way down the candle. Once your dashes are all done, load up your brush really well with paint and making V shapes with short strokes with the mouth of the V open to the right, work your way down and around the candle. These strokes don't have to be perfect, just work your way down following your guide marks and make sure all your Vs are facing the same way. This will be the base of your garland. And now you can add, add lights or any other details. I'm going ahead and using the paint I already had out on my palette and adding blue, gold, and red lights. But feel free to use any color you want or even make different designs. I'm so pleased with how these turned out. I think they are so precious and elegant and classy add such a beautiful ambiance and I'm so happy we found a way to use these thrifted pieces and incorporate them into our holiday decor this year. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me if you've made it this far in this video and you aren't subscribed like I don't know what to say just like do it like uh, 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 we're all doing it okay that we are a small channel but we are a mighty community. I look forward to hearing from you all in the comments. I will see you on Sunday for another DIY video and don't forget vlogmas starts on December 2nd and we'll light the first candle together. I'll see you then. Bye!